Hey guys, my name is Donny and welcome back to another episode of building a D-type from scratch. And for you guys that are new to the channel, I've spent the last two years or so building a replica Jaguar D-type out of aluminium, basically from scratch. So you guys are welcome to go back to my channel and check out all the videos from the beginning of how I built the car to where it is now. And for the last couple of videos, I've been working hard at the mechanical part of this car to get it to start and run and drive so that I can take it for its first drive so we can start finishing off the build. And in the second to last video, I actually got the engine started after working on the carburetors. And in the last video, I installed a sweet sounding exhaust. And in this video, I plan on working on the cooling of the engine because at the moment I can only start it and idle it for a short amount of time before it starts overheating. So I'd really like to get the cooling sorted out so that I can start it and I know that it'll stay up to temperature so I can then from there start working on the idling and the timing and making sure that the alternator charges and working on the rest of the mechanics so we can take the car for a drive. So I'm going to flip the camera around now and I'm going to show you what my plan is. So guys, as far as cooling goes on this car, I think it'll be very simple. All I basically need is a radiator and an expansion tank and then connect everything together. The engine is already fitted with a water pump and a thermostat. So I just need to install those things and my cooling should be sorted. As far as the radiator is concerned, I went ahead and I just measured the cavity over there and I've gone and bought a generic radiator that fits that cavity over there making sure that the exit pipes are where I want them to be. So that was quite simple. I just need to make some fittings and then put it over there. As far as the expansion tank or the reservoir tank is concerned, I could have gone and just bought a plastic bottle and put it in there, a generic plastic bottle, and that would have resolved my issue. But on the original D-types, the expansion tank that sits in front of the engine is so prominent and such a beautiful piece of the engine bay it actually makes the engine look about 8 inches or so longer that I thought that I would try my hand at making an aluminium expansion tank that's going to sit there in the front of this engine so that it'll look very much like the original. Now as far as making this reservoir tank what I'm going to do is I've got this 3mm piece of aluminium plate and I went ahead and I drew out a profile of what I think the end caps should look like very much the same as the original. I'm going to show you some pictures on the screen of what the original reservoir tanks looks like. And I'm going to take this profile and transfer it onto this piece of pine and then use that to make my end caps for my reservoir tank. And then what I went ahead and did was I bought this uh, aluminium radiator cap end and I'm going to be welding it onto my reservoir tank and I've got this pipe so I can make an inlet and an exit for my reservoir and I think that's going to be basically it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out this profile, transfer it onto the pine so that I can use that and then cut out a piece of aluminium so that I can start making my end caps.
Alrighty guys, time for an update. I have now finished making these end caps and cleaned them off a little bit. And I then proceeded by making this base and then shaping it into position. Now the next step for me is to clean everything off and start welding these seams and then start fitting these end caps onto this base. And after that, I can then determine the position where I'm going to put this uh, reservoir cap. And I reckon I'm probably going to have to take off a couple of millimeters just to recess it even more into this reservoir so that I'll have enough clearance in the engine bay. And when I'm done with that, I can determine the position where I want to fit these aluminium pipes, cut them to size and then install them and weld them into position. Let's get going. Alrighty guys, check it out. I finished making a reservoir tank and I also made some uh, brackets for it to bolt onto to the chassis. And I also went ahead behind the scenes and I made a cradle for the radiator and I fitted the radiator. And all that remains now for me is to install my new uh, reservoir tank and fill it up with some antifreeze and we'll be ready to go. Alrighty guys, check it out. I've installed this water reservoir and I said it before, but I'll say it again. I like it. I like it a lot. I also installed these water pipes and everything. So everything is now connected. And I put a picture up on the screen of an original detox so you guys can just see or have a comparison of what the original looks like, but it looks very much the same in my opinion. Now the last thing for me to do is to just add some antifreeze and we'll be done with the whole cooling system. But before I do that, I just want to check for any leaks or any potential um, places where water is going to leak out and lose all of my antifreeze. And to do that, I'm going to show you guys a trick or a hack that I've now used for many years on probably hundreds of cars to find water leaks in the system because some of you might know that a water leak or water loss in an engine bay is, is almost like voodoo sometimes. It cannot be explained. You don't know where the water goes to. And the only way to try and find a water leak is to get the engine up to temperature and then hope it pressurizes enough so that you'll find the water leak. And then also sometimes you just lose water without ever knowing where it goes. And guys, what you can do is you can go out and you can buy a water pressurizer so that what you do is you undo this cap over here and you just put that pressurizer on top there and you plug it in and you pressurize the system and then you'll find your water leak. But the way I do it is I believe more efficient 
and also much much cheaper because doing it this way means that you don't have to undo this cap and sometimes the problem lays with this cap and you'll never know it if you have to undo it every time to pressurize the system so guys what I do just about on every single car the, you've got the thick water pipes going from the radiator to the engine and so on and then you've got thinner 8 millimeter pipes sometimes 8 millimeter sometimes 6 millimeter pipes that also runs throughout the water system to help with eliminating stuff like air locks and stuff like that and what I do is I just do undo one side of the 8 millimeter pipe and I connect a an old bicycle valve into that pipe over there and then I plug up the other side and I then connect it to a normal bicycle pump with a gauge and I can then pressurize this system up to whatever the water system in the car is rated for this one for instance is 1.1 bar so I can pump it up to 1.1 bar and if there's any leaks in the system it should start hissing or um, showing some sort of leak somewhere in the system as soon as I start pressurizing it and if I've got it pressurized I can just monitor that gauge and if it keeps it's pressure then I know there's no leaks in the system and I can just undo this gap over here and I can have the air go out and I can fill it up with antifreeze and I'll know that there aren't any leaks in the system so I'm going to be doing that now quickly I'm going to add some antifreeze and we'll be done with that alright guys that was very uneventful I just did a pressure test and made sure that there wasn't any leaks I then plugged that hole over there and I filled it up with 50% antifreeze and distilled water it took about nine and a half liters of fluid I don't know how many gallons that is three gallons I think but now the system is full of water and it is now ready to start to make sure that it keeps its temperature and it doesn't become warm or anything like that but guys I'm not going to start it now because first of all I want to have a look at this precarious engine uh, stand that I've got going here I am worried that it's going to rattle and that the bonnet's going to fall over so I'm not going to start the car now I'll do that in the next video after I fixed this bonnet stand or made something new but guys my list is now very very short we're about 90% there I only got about like 70% to go and we'll be done with the car but in any case thanks for watching guys I hope that you enjoyed it and I will see you next time cheers